Okay, class, so let's continue with the Apollo problem. So, um, everything that we did before in the previous video, uh, it's general, you can use it for any problem. Um, essentially, what we did was to uh, use the, kin the kinematic equation for the position uh, in x and in y to calculate, to derive the, um, the range. So, for how long an object will go um, as a function of the angle that it makes with the horizontal, the initial velocity, and the acceleration due to gravity, whatever you are. So, if you already knew this formula, then the problem um, is much shorter, right? So, just want to know the difference between the range on the moon and on Earth. So the conditions will be the same. And this is the acceleration due to gravity on the moon. Um, initial velocity is the same. Sine of two theta is the same. Um, whenever you're solving a problem, we should try to go as uh, as deep as possible uh, with integrals or with algebra. So keep your variables in there until the very, very end. Uh, it's a more elegant way to solve problems, but it also minimizes mistakes because sometimes you have, you know, 7.35 here and then times something over here. You multiply, you get a different number that you don't know where, you know, uh, easily you don't know where it came from. But if we keep all your variables in here until the very end, then it, it is much, uh, it, it is more likely that you're going to get the, the right solution. So over here we have the range on the moon Here we have the range on Earth. So you have uh, acceleration due to gravity on the moon and on Earth. And these two are the same. And we know that the acceleration due to gravity on the moon is one sixth that on Earth. So now it's, um, it's kind of a nice equation. going to be right we can move the six up here So this becomes right. So we can get rid of this part over here and this uh, G over here. So now we can make it look even nicer. Move the five over here and just divide everything by the acceleration due to gravity on Earth. And so now you can plug in your numbers, so we know P naught. Meters per second squared. Sine of 60 degrees, it is not 30, it is twice that. Okay. 
and we divide it by 9.8 meters per second squared. So, um, let me grab my calculator. get that the difference in the ranges is 276 point 15 meters uh, this is meter squared second squared this is meter in second squared uh, you cannot see it but I can slide you end up with your meters over here There you go, that's part A. So the, the, I'm gonna put it over here, do we have space? Over here. So the last part of the problem asked for the difference in time. So for how much longer is the ball um, airborne on the moon? I guess there's no air on the moon. Well, whatever, you know, um, compared to the Earth. And we already have uh, the answer. It's over here. So again, the v nuts are the same, the thetas are the same. And that is the same expression that we had before. So uh, it was five. Over GE. So we can put it, take the five out, so it's 10 V naught sine theta over GE. So Ten twenty-five meters per second. Um, sine of theta. I mean, sine of thirty degrees. I should put it over here. Um, Zero point five. divided by 9.8 meters per second squared. Five seconds. All right, so that was the Apollo problem. Quite elegant, and um, we were able to derive the range. Uh, feel free to use that formula. Uh, you don't have to do the whole derivation. 
uh, but sometimes you might be uh, asked for things that are part of the derivation of the time, but um, it's not part of the of the range. All right. So I hope you enjoyed the problem.